Hey, welcome to the Vortex Garage and a really quick video here. We want to show you if you have a Series 3 Jaguar XJ6 and you've got one of these Lucas Ignition amplifiers. Well, if it's going bad or you suspect that it's bad and you've looked to replace it, you've most likely seen these parts cost around 150 to 300 US dollars. What we're going to show you today is this thing has a little secret inside and you can actually repair it and replace the component that's known to fail for somewhere around the 20 to 50 dollar mark. So, let's go ahead and show you the secrets of the Lucas Ignition Module, well, Ignition Amplifier. Before we open the Ignition Amplifier, we'll quickly show how to remove it from the car. Note that this was done during a major service, so we do have a few other things out of the way here. Note that for this video we are featuring a two-wire DAB102 version of the AB14 Ignition Module. If you have a four-wire DAB106, it's essentially the same except for the inclusion of two resistors inside the case, a 10K resistor for tachometer and a 6.8K resistor for EFI triggering. Ours did not have these resistors. All right, so before we disconnect that piece, what you might see that I've done here is I've pulled off, there's a couple of the wires that come off of here and go up to there. I've marked them A and B, and then I've marked the terminals that they came off uh, and I'm going to try to pull these through without losing them. There, that wasn't too bad. And then you can kind of see we do have some broken insulation here. So we're going to try to get something on that to, uh, to at least cover that and fix it. So we've also got a connector down here. We'll pull that connector out, hopefully without breaking it. It sounds a little crunchy. And I'm hoping... Oh yeah, look at how broken that is. That's fun. I don't have a new one of those. That's wonderful. I really didn't pull on that very hard. It's pretty simple about how it's held on. So it looks like on this side, we do have a uh, fuel line that is cinched on. So when we take this off and it looks like there's a spacer. Jag loves to use these little spacers everywhere. I swear it's like I used to build things, you know, be like, oh, it doesn't quite fit. Get a spacer. Well, that's a nice little spacer. I ain't, I ain't hating. All right, put that here. Let's get the other one off. The ignition amp is fairly easy to remove. Two bolts hold it on, with one of them having a spacer and a fuel line mount. Then it's just the wiring harness to the coil and the plug on the back side that goes to the distributor. Of course, as you saw, that plug that goes to the distributor is probably extremely fragile from years of heat. We'll give you some details on sourcing a replacement shortly. Our Lucas ignition amplifier. Set that over here. Brought that tool cart for a reason. Put this back in and is it just me or is there, is there oil on that? There's definitely oil on that, which tells me, oddly enough, that makes me feel that this goes into the manifold and is a hole in the manifold. Why else would there be oil on it? That has to go into the actual manifold, which means, couldn't there be an air leak if that's not sealed? So, yay. Maybe what we'll do is uh, put a little sealant on that one. This one does not have that, so that is interesting. We'll just reinstall the bolts the way they came off, and now we can head back to the bench and take apart our ignition amplifier to rebuild it. And I think that one of the secrets to it is the fact that it is an ignition module, and that's what we're going to find in there. So we've got our camera set up here, and what we're going to do is go ahead and open this thing up. So what we're going to do is flip this thing over, and we should have some very small bolts here. Let's see how small. All right, that is a five millimeter. I just out of curiosity, it is a three sixteenths. It's actually a lot tighter as a three sixteenths. I found that a lot of things on this are this car are actually imperial. So here we'll just remove the four bolts that hold this plate on. Are you ready? Are you ready for the secret? Ta-da! Yep, that's right. 
The primary piece inside the Lucas Ignition Amplifier is a run-of-the-mill four-wire General Motors HEI module. Part of GM's high-energy ignition system, the HEI module was used in literally millions of vehicles and is extremely popular today in the aftermarket. It's also extremely easy to source. Along with the HEI module, inside the amp is a condenser and a Zener diode. Now usually these don't fail. If a failure does occur in the amp, it's with the HEI module most of the time. So here is that stuff I was mentioning. You can kind of look at that. It's beryllia. Contains beryllia. Do not open. If not being replaced, there's no need to remove the condenser. We did so only to obtain specs from it. Removing the HEI module, though, is a very simple process, just removing two nuts and the bolts that retain it. Here's our new one from GM. Alright, uh, so I just hooked that up so I wouldn't lose track of where they go. But pretty simple, this is actually a kind of bridged U-piece, so it actually just plugs into one of those, and then the other one plugs in on the top. Just plug in the bottom ones there, and they're all set and ready to go. And then this will lay in here, but one thing I need to fish out of here, I have this little plastic piece from our connector that broke when we took it out, so we're going to probably repair that connector. So one of the reasons I took this out, I wanted to try to gather specs off of it if I could. Original versions of both the 1MF Lucas condenser and the 350 volt clamping Zener diode do not appear to be available. However, I will link to some sources for alternatives that I found in researching. Usually these parts are fine. The condenser is mainly used for radio frequency interference suppression and the Zener diode serves as external protection for the module, mainly used in the case of spark energy that has nowhere to go, i.e. through a disconnected coil end. Before mounting the module, I wanted to go to my computer area and get some thermal paste for heat sinks. Now this is going to help with thermal transfer between the module and the base, hopefully extending its life. So in my thermal paste situation, that's a pen, I found these cheap syringes, my Arctic Silver 5, and a jar of silver paste. This stuff also appears to be some sort of silver cheap thermal paste, uh, which should work. I've also got this, which is white lithium grease, which you might think, well, that's not smart. You shouldn't use that. Well, I'm not building a CPU. I just want something to kind of help the heat transfer on the back of this. Now, this is metal, and this is uncovered metal going to uncovered metal. So having the silver thermal paste should not be a problem per se. Um, that said, I could also use this white lithium grease. I'm actually going to go ahead and use the silver paste, but what I'm going to do before I use it is I just want to show you, I'm going to use this little box and put a little bit of it out here. So I remember back in the old days of overclocking and all that good stuff, there used to be discussions about whether or not some of the silver paste were conductive of electricity, not just heat. So let's see if there's any resistance. Okay, so if I put one terminal here, and one in here. Nothing. So that tells me that this stuff should be safe to use. It's not overly conductive electrically. And again, I'm going metal to metal anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'm not going to glob it on. It's one of the things you want to do with thermal paste bit on here like that. Put a little there. I'm just going to take this little uh, instruction sheet here and I'm going to use the straight edge of the paper to very lightly smooth some of this on. So basically here it is. As you can see we just got a little bit on there. That's all we need. And the whole point of it is all we want is to make a little more direct contact. We want to fill in some of those very small air pockets that would exist. Okay, so let's plug this stuff back in. So this is B. This is C. Okay. 
Now we can go ahead and replace the HEI module. Now the bolts that go through actually go through the back side of the case and have a retention mechanism that holds them in place. You'll see that pretty obviously when you look at it. And I found these two flat washers. I'm going to put them over top. I actually didn't see where they came from exactly. Oops. So I'm going to do flat washers, lock washers, and I'm not going to put them below because I want there to be adequate room for a contact to be made. Right, everything looks good there. It's nice and tight. Put our wiring back here. And since we had removed it, we went ahead and put back our condenser. And there we go. So that's gone ahead and rebuilt our piece. Now I do have our uh, connector that broke. We can either epoxy that on and reuse it, or what we're gonna do, we're gonna check the local parts store and see if we can get one. Before we deal with that connector, we need to put the front plate back on, simply done with four small bolts. And then we need to deal with our wire insulation. Fortunately, our original insulation was torn in one spot, but otherwise largely intact. So I was able to simply slide over some high temp heat shrink tubing with adhesive to repair the torn spot. Additionally, our wiring was in overall good condition. If the wires are excessively worn, damaged, hard, or have brittle insulation or other signs of corroded copper, I would definitely replace them. Now, if you're replacing the wiring, I highly recommend choosing a wire suitable for the high heat underhood applications, such as an SXL type wire. We'll try to link to some in the video description. All right, so that's some high temp heat shrink with adhesive. That should go ahead and lock that in place and protect it and protect our original insulation. Now, about that broken connector that goes to the distributor. I was able to use Dorman part number 85841, which is a GM alternator regulator connector, and I modified it slightly to work. Basically, I simply shaved down the outer circumference of the plastic, including the top latch area, until it fits smoothly into the ignition amp. Then I simply used a terminal extractor to move the wires to the new connector end. I did not use the Dorman wires, I just moved the Jag wires into the Dorman plastic connector housing that was modified. As an FYI, at the time of posting this video, our car is still in the midst of a major service, so we'll be testing this out as soon as we can and give you an update on how the car is running. But I did want to let you know that we didn't actually get a chance to test the vehicle for this video. Alright, now as you can see, for a fraction of the price of buying a new Lucas Ignition Amplifier, we've repaired and basically refurbished this one by replacing the HEI module that hides inside. And it's actually really cool that there's a very common part inside of this, something that you could literally buy in any town in the United States. Now that said, don't be tempted by aftermarket and super cheap ones you might find on the internet. You get what you pay for. Whether it doesn't work out of the box, breaks within a year, or gives you tons of trouble and gremlins that you're chasing. What I highly recommend is you go with an OEM part here. As you see, we use an AC Delco part. It was GM branded out of the box with a GM part number cross-reference. We'll post that up, there, up for you so you know where you can get the same part we used. That said, uh, symptoms of a bad HEI module could be anything from issues when the car is hot, loss of ignition, uh, misfires, weird ignition gremlins, or like I said, complete loss of ignition and the thing's completely hosed. And yes, there are ways to test them, which we didn't get into in this video. You can find plenty of that here on YouTube uh, because they're so ubiquitous. That said, the purpose of this video was really to show you that you could rebuild your original uh, Lucas Ignition amplifier on your Series 3 Jag with just replacing the HEI module. Definitely pretty cool. Well, if you like this, drop us a like, drop us a subscribe, because we're going to have plenty more Jag content and other stuff here on Vortex Garage.